Hey guys, Mr. Swobland here. Um, so I'm just gonna go through our lesson for today. So we are going to go through um, our 13 colonies and we're kind of gonna look at them in depth um, starting today and a little bit more into next week. But today we're just gonna give a, kind of an overview or an introduction to all of the 13 colonies. So let's go ahead and check them out. All right, so we're gonna start with the Puritans. And the Puritans were, of course, a group of people who came to the United States seeking religious freedom. So they're known as Puritans because they wanted to purify the Church of England. So they're not really interested in separating from it. They want to purify the church. So that means that they are going to face some persecution back in England. Um, they are not really what the rest of England is doing. They're not following the guidelines of the Anglican Church. And so they're going to be persecuted uh, back in England. Um, the Puritans themselves really believed that God required them to work hard. They were very strict. Um, they believed that a lot of stuff that people enjoy doing, like dancing or drinking alcohol, playing games, were sins, um, and they would lead to laziness. So the Puritans are very like, focused on getting work done and very focused on religion. They were opposed to what King James I was doing with the Church of England, and they were persecuted because of that. So they kind of had some different religious ideas. They thought some of the things in the Church of England should change. And the, um, the king essentially was kind of upset about this, so they ended up being persecuted. And because of this, we're gonna have thousands of Puritan families leaving England seeking religious freedom in the new world in the United States. This becomes known as the Great Migration. It says, we are leaving England because the king treats us badly. So in 1630, about a thousand passengers sailed to the Massachusetts Bay Colony and they are going to start up a colony there. And these are the Puritans. They're gonna be led by John Winthrop, and the Puritans, though, are not going to suffer the same fate that they did in Jamestown. They're going to be well supplied, so they're not going to go through a starving time. Um, and they're going to uh, be able to establish their colony pretty well. The Puritans, of course, moved into Massachusetts Bay. So if you look over here, you can see Plymouth, um, Massachusetts Bay, or Plymouth. You can see that it's this kind of isolated area on the map. So it provides a pretty um, safe harbor. So it's a good place to park your boats. Um, and it's gonna be a place where the Puritans come to settle. So pretty soon um, the other Puritans are gonna be founded in this same area, so nearby. And once there's a successful colony, it's gonna provide um, a settlement or a base for other colonies to get started. And we'll see that um, in this area. And it's gonna become known as New England as more and more people start to settle there. So the Puritans have this idea of becoming setting up a city on a hill. And a city on a hill is a religious metaphor. So it's kind of talking about setting up a perfect society or a utopia, a place where people are peaceful, they kind of live to their religious ideals, and everybody works hard. So they really are coming to the United States or to the New World at this point to try and set up this perfect society or a city upon a hill. Um, they are hoping that this colony not only is great for them, but it also provides an example for the rest of the world to follow so that they are creating a place where other people want to live, that it is something that um, is desirable for other people. And it's really going to be focused on their religious values. Um, these are very religious people. It's kind of hard for us to understand during our modern times just how religious people were during this time period. But people, and especially people like the Puritans, literally their entire existence is focused on um, their religion. It's really, they wake up and pray, they go to sleep and pray, um, it's really going to be the focus of their entire daily lives. So this idea of creating this like perfect utopian society that the Puritans come to espouse or talk about is really going to be a legacy that carries with us in um, 
American history. And the city on the hill is going to be a metaphor that keeps coming back. All right, so at this point, what we are going to do is we're going to go through um, these blue slides. There are quite a few of them, and they are going to be talking about each individual colony. So we're going to look at them at just like a 30,000 foot view or a really um, large view, just kind of see who founded the colony, what were the reasons it was founded, um, what did the climate and geography look like. So that might mean like, what did people do for a living there, which is in the economy. We'll talk a little bit about their religion and then their government. So as we are doing this, you guys have a, um, in Canvas, you have an assignment called the 13 Colonies Introduction. So you can see that right here. So you guys in here, I'm going to refresh the page, will have an embedded Google Doc assignment. So just like we've been doing recently, these are the Google Docs. So you can go ahead and type out your notes on here. Or if you want to have a larger screen, which I would probably recommend because there's a lot of typing today, you can click on this and it will open up into a new screen for you, all right? So as we go through all of these, you guys need to take notes, follow along, and then complete them. I will go ahead and put in a completed copy of the notes. You can see it's up here. And there will also be a video recording of this lesson in there as well. So both of those things are there to help you um, as you go along. The completed copy of the notes, though, won't let you like copy it all, so you're going to have to follow along and type everything out. All right, so let's take a look at Massachusetts. So if I come here and I take a look at our chart, the first thing that we need to fill out is who is the founder. And what it is going to tell us on this is John Winthrop is the founder. So you can see what I did there. I went ahead, I saw um, the founder. It says John Winthrop is the founder. And I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to fill that out on my chart, All right? So I'm going to go through these relatively quickly. If you get um, stuck, you can pause the video and pull up those copy of the notes and you can fill in what you were missing, all right? Or just pause the video when it's on this screen and you can take it all out. All right. All right, so let's see, what were the reasons the Massachusetts Bay Colony was founded? And it says the reasons were founded were to escape religious persecution in England. Remember, and these are those Puritans that we're talking about, and they are coming to the United States to escape religious persecution in England, all right? So we're just gonna fill these out as we go. All right, let's take a look, who are the people? So we have separatists called Pilgrims and Puritans, Remember, separatists are people who are um, inside of the Anglican Church, so they're not necessarily wanting to stop being an Anglican Church member. They just want to purify it, and a lot of their purifications are going to be just um, keeping things more in line with what is written in the Bible or how they interpret what's written in the Bible. <laughs> So the climate and geography of the Massachusetts Bay Colony is going to be fertile land and heavily forested, bitter cold winters, warm and humid summers, all right? So fertile land and heavily forested. And bitter cold winters and warm and humid summers. So the climate of the Massachusetts Bay Colony is going to be fertile land or cold winters and warm, and warm and humid summers. And the geography will be fertile land and heavily forested. So let's take a look at the economy. So the economy is going to focus on shipping, fur, lumber, and cattle. So we can go ahead and type those in there. And so shipping is going to be when we are taking products or goods from one colony to another colony or from the colonies to a different continent like Europe or Africa. <coughs> when we looked at that map, you saw that there was that really protected cove in Massachusetts Bay. And that's going to be a big reason why um, these colonies focus on shipping is because there's a lot of protected areas for them to park their ships essentially. Um, lumber is also going to become very important for these northern economies. 
Um, England itself used to be heavily forested, but over the thousands of years that people had been living there, most of that, most of the forests had been cut down to build ships, to build houses, to build, just to build things. And so um, a lot of Europe at this point really doesn't have very many um, tall trees. And so it's going to be very important to the shipbuilding trade to import those large trees back to England. And those are especially important for the masts, which are the central part of the boat that holds up the sails. So let's take a look at religion. So the religion of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, lives centered around religious worship and the church. So we're gonna say lives centered around religious worship and the church. Like I mentioned before, so people during this time period are very, very religious. So it's hard, kind of hard for us to understand how religious people were back then, but think of the most religious person you know, and then multiply that by two. And that's about how religious um, these groups of people would be. All right, the government. So they had a theocracy, which means that it's a law based on religion. So in this case, it'd be a, the Bible. So a theocracy, laws of the colony based on religious beliefs. They met in town hall meetings, were ruled by ministers, but only white men in good standing with the church could, be, could vote. And these were called perfect citizens. Um, and it's pretty challenging to become one of those. So while they do have some levels of democracy, their democracy is pretty limited. So I'm gonna say a theocracy, the laws of the colony were based on religion. I'm gonna say some democratic assemblies, but limited to, um, say, church leaders. And I'm going to put in parentheses, white men, because this is not really something that we're going to say lots of people have the ability to vote. It's just going to be limited to rich white guys, old rich white men, as we, we will see in U.S. history for quite a while. All right, let's take a look at our next colony, Rhode Island. So Rhode Island is actually founded by Roger Williams, and he is trying to escape religious persecution in Massachusetts. So he's actually running away from that Massachusetts Bay Colony when he establishes the Rhode Island Colony. So Roger Williams is going to be our founder, and he is trying to escape religious persecution in Massachusetts. Right, so he is trying to escape um, the Puritans who are very focused on their own religion but are not very tolerant of other people's religions. So he's running away from there trying to uh, escape essentially. It's kind of ironic that the people who found the Massachusetts Bay Colony are escaping religious persecution in England and then they force Roger Williams out who starts Rhode Island trying to escape religious persecution in Massachusetts. So Rhode Island is going to be founded by both Europeans and Native Americans. I'm going to put American Indians in. It's a little bit more modern of a term. The climate and geography. So their geography will have red clay soil, and then for their climate, colder winters and short but humid summers. Red clay soil. Shorter winters, but warm, humid summers. All right. What is the economy? So the economy is going to be cattle and dairy farmers, subsistence farmers, and shipping. So um, when we talk about subsistence farming, this is kind of a vocab term that you may not have heard before. And what is this is meaning is just that people are producing enough crops just to feed themselves. So they're not producing crops like tobacco to be sold but they are producing crops that they themselves are going to eat. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Cattle and dairy farmers. Subsistence farming and shipping. So, you know, this red clay soil is not as fertile as we will see in some of the other colonies. So they're not going to be producing a ton of crops, but they will have a very large cattle and dairy industry. So raising cattle to be slaughtered and then also raising cattle to produce milk. There will be people who are doing subsistence farming, so growing enough food for their family to eat. 
and then of course shipping. And we're going to see shipping be an important part of the economy for all of these northern colonies. All right, the religion was religious freedom, and that just means that people are really able to follow their own religion. So they're able to practice whatever religion they like. And finally, the government. So they have a governor and a general assembly. And these general assemblies are really gonna be the foundations of democracy that we see start to develop in the United States. Um, they are not doing a ton of governing at this point. Remember, all these people are still loyal subjects to the Britain. There's not even really a thought of trying to make your own country at this point. People are really just focused on being subjects of the king. Um, but the General Assembly will be the beginnings of democracy that we see in these 13 colonies. All right, on to our next one. New York. New York was initially founded as New Amsterdam. It was founded by the Dutch as their colony in um, the New World, I guess. But um, in about the mid 1600s, it will be overtaken by the English. Um, a guy named Lord Stuyvesant will surrender and it will become an English colony. New York is obviously a very important city to us today. It was a very important city during this time period. And it's really going to be like a central meeting place. The Dutch are very famous for being tolerant and kind of accepting a lot of different religions and languages and different types of people. And we'll kind of see the same thing develop in New York. It's really a very interesting place when you look at American history during this time period. All right, so our founders were Samuel Dam, De Champlain, and Henry Hudson. Um, reasons were founded, money and natural resources. I'm gonna add in there two um, great location. So really being at the mouth of the Hudson River is gonna allow for New York City, not just the colony, but New York City to really develop. And New York City really will become very, very important for the development of um, our colonies. So money, natural resources, And then I'm going to say, and New York City is at the mouth of the Hudson River. When I say the mouth of the Hudson River, what that's talking about is it's the area where the river meets the ocean. And that tends to be a really important place for large rivers because it's going to help with shipping. So you can imagine that during this time period, people don't have um, cars, right? There's no airplanes, there's no railroads. So if you want to get something from point A to point B, you can either carry it on horseback or in a cart, or you can ship it um, in the water. And shipping it in the water is much, much faster. It's much easier. You're able to carry a lot more stuff. So really being on the mouth of the river is going to be a great advantage when you're starting a city. All right, so who were the people that founded this place? Mixed Europeans and indentured servants. Really, New York is going to become uh, very much a melting pot of different types of people. So you're going to see people from lots of different places, some American Indians, and of course, indentured servants. And indentured servants, remember, are people who are brought over into the colony. Um, they're kind of like slaves for a limited amount of time. They have to work on their owner's farm. And then usually after a period of seven years, um, they're given a certain amount of money and let go. So they can go start their own um, farms or start their own lives. All right, the climate and geography of the New York colony. So the soil was fertile, but had trees and rocks. It was hot and humid summers and bitter winters. And bitter just means it's very cold. All right, so what are we going to look at for the economy? We had farmers, merchants, and tradesmen, fur, lumber, and shipping. So lumber is, of course, this means just trees. Um, I think we defined that a little bit earlier. 
um, farmers, lumber, those are really gonna be in the upper regions of New York. So if you kind of look at the map over here, you can see, if you look at New York, if you look up in the Northern portions of New York, it gets a lot more rural, um, but down at the Southern point where you see New York City was, that's gonna be the area where we see more merchants, tradesmen and um, traders. All right. So the religion was religious freedom. So people were able to practice their own religion. And for the government, we had a governor appointed by the king of England. Um, New York is gonna have a lot of very powerful and rich merchants though that are going to um, really become very important and have a lot of power in the city. All right, so let's take a look at our next colony, the Connecticut colony. So Connecticut was founded by Thomas Hooker. And it was founded to escape religious persecution in Massachusetts. So just like Rhode Island, we're going to see another um, colony start with people trying to escape the religious persecution that the Puritans had. All right, and then the people who settled there, so we had a variety of religious groups, mostly Puritans. The climate and geography, so for our geography, it was hilly and forested, and then for the climate, colder winters, short but humid summers. And then for the economy of the Connecticut um, colony, we're gonna have cattle and dairy farmers, subsistence farming, shipping, fishing, and whaling. Again, subsistence farming means that we're growing crops just for the family to eat. Fishing and whaling. Whaling is gonna be a very important um, part of the economy for Connecticut. Um, and whaling is going out and killing whales. Um, during this time period, there were a lot more whales than we have now. And those whales were um, taken, killed, and then all of their fat was removed. And it was used as oil for lamps and also to like lubricate um, machines. So whale oil is going to be very, very expensive. It's kind of a luxury item. Most people don't have lamps. They have candles, um, but it will be a big export product from these Connecticut colonies. Um, we have religious freedom. So people were able to practice whatever religion they wanted. And the government were fundamental orders was the first written constitution in the colonies, extending voting rights beyond church members. So that means um, people who are not part of the church were able to vote as well. Fundamental orders. So let's take a look at Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania colony, founded by William Penn. And it was founded, people trying to escape religious freedom in England. Or religious persecution. So the Pennsylvania colony was founded by William Penn and people trying to escape religious persecution in England. Um, so we have Quakers and other religious groups and the Quakers are um, an important religious group that we still see in the United States today in places like the Amish, you might've heard of them. 
And they're very much focused on equality and tolerance. So I'm going to say speakers and other religious groups. Okay. The climate and geography. So our climate is fertile land and heavily forested, hot and humid summers and cold winters. Most of the climate is pretty similar for these northern colonies. All right, farms. So let's see, the economy is based on farms that produce grains and dairy cattle, merchants and tradesmen, and lumber. So when I say farms that produce grains and cattle, so grains is really um, what we use flour to make bread. So they're producing um, wheat to make bread and flour, essentially. And this is going to be very important because um, they're able to help some of the other colonies that are not producing enough food. All right. And they had religious freedom. So people are able to practice whatever religion they want. And what sort of government did they have? political freedoms and self-government representative assembly. So we're gonna see more democracy in the Pennsylvania colony than in the other ones. Remember a representative assembly is um, just where people are elected who then make the laws. So you elect someone who then goes and makes the laws. All right, let's start heading south and we're going to look at the Maryland colonies. So if we take a look at Maryland, its founder was Lord George Calvert. And Calvert is really going to set up the Maryland colony as his own little kingdom. So um, we're going to kind of see that play out in a couple of ways, and especially with how it's governed. So it's founded by Catholics, that so Catholics could practice their religion. Remember, um, when the Church of England was created, Henry VIII switched from Catholicism to being an Anglican. And that is going to mean that a lot of Catholics that remain in England are very much persecuted. Um, this is made worse because England is at war with France pretty often, and France is a Catholic um, country. So a lot of people in England who were Catholics were said to be traitors or following the French king. So we're going to see a lot of people leaving England because they want to retain uh, their religion. They want to continue being Catholics. Um, so the people who were coming there were Catholics and Protestants who had been persecuted. Let's see, climate and geography. So Chesapeake Bay was surrounded by fertile land, cold winters, and hot summers. All right. So their economy, they produce grains. So again, um, producing crops like wheat that we're going to use to make flour, produce tobacco, flax, fishing, and iron. And a lot of these um, products, especially like the fish, are going to be exported back over to England. So they're catching a lot of cod specifically, putting it on lots and lots of salt, and then shipping it back to England to be sold. Again, we're going to see religious freedom in this colony. And then the government, like I mentioned earlier, so Maryland is established by Lord George Calvert. So the government is really going to... Um, be up to him. So free men were elected representatives, um, but the representatives load both their loyalty to um, Lord Calvert. So free men were 
selected as representatives, but owed their loyalty to Lord Talbert. All right, so now we're heading into uh, more of the southern colonies. Let's take a look at Virginia. And remember, Virginia is where we have Jamestown. So you guys have heard quite a bit about Virginia already. So we have um, two colonies in Virginia. The, well, we have more than two, but our first two was Roanoke. Um, and Roanoke was what we call the lost colony. So we didn't really talk about it very much, but it was essentially a colony that was founded about 20 years before Jamestown and all of a sudden just disappeared. So when people came back to look for it, they found like a, um, on a tree, they found a carving saying that the people had left. It just said one word, but then nobody really knows what happened to them. But it seems most likely that they all died because, you know, most of the people in Jamestown died as well and they barely survived. <coughs> so Sir Walter Raleigh and John Smith um, are going to be our two founders. And Captain John Smith will be the successful founder, right? We talked about him with the Jamestown colony. Um, so the this the Virginia colony was created as an investment by the Virginia Company to produce money. So let's see, um, let's say created as a business by the Virginia Company to make money. And they're gonna do this by selling tobacco. <clears throat> so people, it was populated by Europeans seeking opportunities for cheap land and also just a lot of um, indentured servants and slaves. But the Europeans seeking cheap land, indentured servants, and slaves. And we will see this with all of these southern colonies. Um, this is where we'll start to have African slaves being imported to produce their cash crops. All right, so the climate was mild winters, hot summers. It was swampy in the east and wooded mountains in the west. Um, the economy, cash crops such as tobacco, cotton, indigo, and rice. Indigo is, um, if you guys have a pair of jeans, this that's the dye that is used to color the jeans. It's not actually a dye, but whatever, nobody cares but me. So indigo is going to be a very important um, crop that's produced and then resold. So it makes quite a bit of money. So, so I'm going to say... was the fourth one and cotton of course how could i forget cotton all right virginia let's see what was their religious freedom so they did not have very much religious freedom remember this is um, started as a state sponsored or a company sponsored um, colony so they are going to follow the church of england Or that's also called the Anglican Church. All right, and their government, landowners elected representatives to the House of Burgesses. Um, they're gonna have um, some less representative government than what we might see in some of the Northern colonies. Um, and that's because, again, the Virginia Company is really in control of the colony. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at North and South Carolina then. And remember, you guys can um, feel free to pause the video so that you can take these notes more, like if you're missing parts of the notes. All right, so North and South Carolina were founded by eight Lords proprietors who were friends with Charles II.
And the reason it was founded, it was an investment to make money. So it was founded by people, so Europeans fleeing religious persecution, indentured servants, and African slaves. Remember, these southern colonies don't have much in the way of like towns that we think about them. There's not a whole lot of society. They're really focused on those large plantations. So we have a couple of very, very rich people who own the plantation, and then all everybody else who's working for them. So the indentured servants who are brought over for a period of seven years to work on a farm, and then African slaves. And we're going to see this um, large expansion in the use of African slaves in these southern colonies as the cash crops start becoming more and more profitable in um, England and in Europe. So the climate and geography, we had mild winters, hot summers, um, the swampy in the east and wooded mountains in the west. And the economy is gonna be pretty similar to Virginia, right? So um, again, these Southern colonies are really producing cash crops. So they're producing things such as tobacco, cotton, indigo, and rice. Religion, so they practice religious freedom, so people are able to practice their own religion in South Carolina. And it's ruled by the king, parliament, and the lord's proprietors. And this means that it's really, there's not a whole lot of self-government going on. I remember like this North and South Carolina are founded by friends of King um, Charles II. So they're really going to be like on his side and they're going to want him to be in charge of ruling. The vast majority of the other people who live there, so the indentured servants and the slaves, do not have any say in government. And really a lot of these southern colonies are going to work to keep that type of dynamic going on. All right, our last colony that we're going to look at, Georgia. All right, so Georgia was founded by George II, King George II, and James Oglethorpe set up the colony. And it was founded by a new start for debtors who had been imprisoned. So one of the fundamental differences that we have between England and the United States is um, this concept of debtor's prison. So in the United States, if you go into a large amount of debt, you can do this thing called declare bankruptcy, which is essentially going to mean that you're going to pay back small amounts of your debt over time. In England, though, especially during this time period, it's illegal to be in debt to someone else. So rather than like being able to figure out a way to pay people back, they're going to actually put you in prison. And one of the things that was very common were people were sent to penal colonies. So Georgia was set up kind of as a penal colony and as well as um, a more famous one would be Australia. And especially in a place like Perth, which is a city in Australia, a lot of the residents who were sent there were sent there um, because they, did, they were in debt. So it was their debtor's prison. They were sent there to work off their debt. So for a period of however many years, they're going to be free labor trying to work off that debt. So um, a lot of the people coming to Georgia were debtors. We also had Europeans seeking religious freedom and cheap land and African slaves.
So our climate, we had mild winters and hot summers, and then for geography, swampy in the east and wooded mountains in the west. Skipped one, so sorry, this should go one over. And it was founded as a new start for debtors who had been in prison. All right, so we said mild winters, hot summers, swampy in the east. All right. The economy will produce the same thing as all of our southern dollar colonies are going to produce cash crops such as tobacco, cotton, indigo, and rice. Um, they practice religious freedom. And then landowners elected representatives to the Common House of Assembly. And this is going to be another common thing that we'll see throughout these colonies is that really the people who are elected to be representatives are land holding white men. All right, so um, we got all of this in there. I know I went through it pretty fast, but remember, you have a completed copy of the notes. So if you missed anything, you can come back, um, click on that. It'll open up a PDF version and you can use that to fill any missing gaps. And that's just it's located right here, complete copy of the notes. And there's also a copy of the presentation itself too, if you want to take a look at that. All right, but that should be it. You guys have a great day and please let me know if you have any questions or need any help.